All right. Um, where do we start this week? I suppose I'll take a look back at the Thursday night game between Denver and Cleveland. You know, it was a pretty good game. We had a lot of lead changes, a lot of scoring, some big plays, some quality drives. We had some bad defense, too, obviously, but it was competitive. It was definitely entertaining, and it came down to the last minute. So you can't ask for much more than that. Um, and congratulations to anyone who got to participate in the fantasy football boom of Thursday. If you had Cutler, if you had Eddie Royal, or Brandon Marshall, or Kellen Winslow, or Brady Quinn, you you made out like gangbusters, I gotta say. Me, I had Jamal Lewis, and he gave me 14 and a half, so that's pretty good. Game itself, uh, Cleveland, uh, great performance by Brady Quinn, goes to waste relatively. I mean, you still gotta say he played well up until that final drive where he, uh, missed a couple of throws that could have potentially won them the game, but he played well in his first start. We'll definitely keep an eye on him as the season goes along. Kellen Winslow had that fantastic game, but he made a couple of mental mistakes that blew it, obviously. Um, Cleveland offensive line impressed me because Denver has an underrated pass rush this year, and Denver could not get pressure on Brady Quinn for most of that game. Obviously, the Denver offense was destroyed, but Cutler, you know, great game from Cutler, obviously, but he is so careless with the football. It's like he doesn't even care if he's throwing passes that are at, high risk of, at a high risk of being picked off. The only thing on his mind, it seems like, is how can I make a big play? He doesn't even care about the potential of it getting picked. He was very lucky he didn't throw, like, three or four interceptions against Cleveland, so he's got to iron that part out, or he... Maybe he can even overcome that and become the next Brett Favre. I don't know. That's one thing that worries me about him. He is very, very careless. Uh, Peyton Hillis. I really love that fourth and one run he had on the final Denver drive. That that was great because he had every excuse to go down in the backfield. Great stuff. And um, rest of the week, well, we are about... 21 hours away from some Sunday football action, so let's get down to that. Um, I got Miami over Seattle, you know. I know how this team plays on the road. I see us flying all the way down there to Miami, which is just about the furthest a team can travel in the NFL. I don't like that. I think we're going to be really sluggish having to travel all the way out there. <coughs> I think, you know, Miami has a good ball control offense, and when we can't force turnovers... You can forget about it. We need to force turnovers to be good, I think. And Pennington, I just see him picking apart our defense with little wounded ducks and screens and checks. Hoping for the best, as always, but yeah. Jets over the Rams. It's one of those games where you pick the Jets and then Favre throws like five interceptions and boom, Rams win. Especially because the Jets' defense is extremely inconsistent. They have a very inconsistent pass rush. They have a very inconsistent pass defense. But I have to take them at home. They're just the better team. They're starting to round into something after consecutive piss-poor performances against the Chiefs and the Raiders. I think they're starting to round into something, so I got the Jets. Buffalo. Buffalo is missing, uh, I think, four starters. Dante Whitner, Aaron Schobel, a couple others, too. And, you know, that hurts. And they're starting to lose it. <coughs> they were a fun team with the, over the first five, six weeks. But they've become careless with the football. Um, they, their offense hasn't been able to develop any consistency. Their no-name defense isn't making the plays they need to. So I gotta take New England at home to get back on track after that tough Sunday night loss. Um, Chicago and Tennessee. You know, I see Grossman having a four interception game or something like that. This Tennessee defense is too good and too smart to fall for his screw it, I'm going deep game strategy. Uh, strategy. It might produce one long touchdown, but I think there are gonna be a lot of turnovers in this game. and. You know, Chicago's defense really isn't that good this year. 
it's very inconsistent and only shows up from time to time. So, Tennessee. <coughs> Dante Culpepper returns to NFL action for the Detroit Lions. And even though Jacksonville is a mess right now, um, you had the Mike Peterson incident where he got sent home. Matt Jones, um, I don't know when his suspension is going to start, but that's obviously a concern they have. Um, you have no bad play calling. You have it's a power running team that cannot run the ball. And in spite of all the things wrong with them right now, and they are a mess locker room wise right now, I think they're good enough to beat the Lions in Detroit. Green Bay, Minnesota. This is a big game, guys. Whoever wins <coughs> is, I think, actually looking good for the division. I, I, I'm not. I, I don't think the Bears are gonna. I don't see how the Bears are gonna end up winning this division with Grossman <coughs> for what appear. It sounds like it'll be a month. So I think Chicago is gonna fall off a little bit. All that said. I think I'm going to go Green Bay in this game. I think Gus Perot might end up throwing this game away along with t uh, Brad Childress. I think Green Bay bounces back from that tough loss against Tennessee. Atlanta, New Orleans. I'm just taking the home team here. When it comes to these NFC South matchups, that's about all I can do. So I'm just going to take the home team and go with the Falcons, but this is a toss-up. It could go either way. I'm taking Baltimore over Houston. I think Andre Johnson's going to have a big game, but I, I, I do think Baltimore's really going to round into form as the se second half of the season goes along and push for that division title. They're only one game back of Pittsburgh, and they play um, Pittsburgh one more time this year. So I think that's going to be interesting to watch. I, Houston got too many problems right now. I think Amobi Okoye is actually going to miss this game as well, so... Carolina over Oakland. I don't really feel I need to justify myself here. I think Carolina is just going to run the ball all day, and this is going to be a lot like that Falcons Raiders game. <coughs> uh, Colts and Steelers. I don't know, guys. I know Pittsburgh might not have Ben Roethlisberger. They might not have Heinz Ward. They might not have Lamar Woodley. They won't have Willie Parker. And if they do have those guys, they're going to be not at 100%. But they're at home. They're the better team this year. Um, Indy, we still don't know everything we need to know about Indy. You know, if they have to go with, like, Byron Leftwich and Nate Washington and whoever the backup outside linebacker is, I can see Indy pulling this off on the road. But everything would have to go right for them. Freeney and Mathis would have to beast... Manning would have to be on track all game, etc. So I'm going to eschew all the in injury stuff for a moment, and I'm just going to say Pittsburgh for now. I might come on here before the game and change it if I hear something about the injury situation that completely throws me, but I'm going to go Pittsburgh right now. San Diego over Sa um, Kansas City. I think they keep pace with Denver for that division title. <coughs> And, you know, the Chiefs, I know they've looked good the last couple weeks in blowing huge leads, but i got to go with San Diego at home. Very tempted to take Philadelphia, but I'm a coward. What can I say? Giants are the better team, and even though they're on the road, i got to take them. And finally, I'm taking Arizona over San Francisco at home. I think they're officially for real now, guys. they got great offensive weapons and a playmaking defense. I think it's time to accept that they're for real. Real quick, college football, I haven't really commented on it this year, but here's what I see going down in these last couple weeks. Texas Tech is going to lose to Oklahoma, I think, and Alabama is going to lose to Florida. That leaves Penn State is the only major school undefeated, and I think that will get them into the national championship, even though they are not the strongest undefeated team we've ever seen. And it's gonna the national championship's gonna be Penn State versus whoever the BCS likes best between Florida, Texas, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, uh, Alabama, etc. There are a whole bunch of te one loss teams they could pick from, and my guess is they're gonna pick Florida. So it's gonna be Penn State versus Florida, the national championship. I think it's gonna be a great game. I got Florida winning that game. That's just my guess the college football ranks. I don't follow college football too much, but that's what I got. 
And with that, I will see you guys after the game Sunday.